playing games, no, no. What's my name? What? Say, what's my name? Shaka Shine. Okay, okay, okay. Shaka Shine. What's goody, fam? You already know who it is. It's Shaka Shine, and I'm coming back at it with another reaction on Shaka Shine Reacts. Today, I got to give a big O shout out to Travis. And their request was Larry Bird. And this is Who's Really the Go? Now, for the people that have been hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that comment button, you know me, this is a channel of giving credit when credit's due, and y'all deserve all the credit. So I gotta say thank you. Truly appreciate every single one of y'all. With that being said, for the people that are waiting on their requests, as you can see, we get every single one of y'all. But instead of put it on the list, it's on the list and it's coming up. You can always skip the line by hitting me with a donation. Again, links right underneath the like button, and I'll make sure I get your reaction out within 72 hours. Now, as far as Larry Bird goes, He's a beast, okay? If this is your first time seeing one of my Larry Bird reactions, please make sure to check out the playlist. We have a lot of Larry Bird reactions. It's in the sports playlist, so check it out. And if you're coming back for another Larry Bird reaction, then let's get straight to it. Larry, Joe, Bird. There have been players who were great at one aspect of the game. I did not know his middle name was Joe, so already learning something and we're only 28 seconds in. There have also been some, although far fewer in number, who were outstanding multi-dimensional players. But Larry Bird is one of only a handful of NBA stars who excelled in every facet of the game. You're the best all-around player that ever played. Bird makes the five. I've always had to develop different aspects of the game to be able to get my shot off. Larry Bird. Oh, man. He had a killer instinct. He yep. came for the juggler vein every time he played against you. Wasn't no nights off with him. You know you caused me a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> Once he experienced the taste of excelling under pressure, Bird never looked back. Three straight times in the mid-80s, he was voted the league's most valuable player. The initial one coming... Which was well-deserved. Let me just add that. In 1984, when the Celtics faced Magic Johnson's L.A. Lakers in the first of their epic playoff battles in the 80s. Let's go. Burr was a bad somebody. <laughs> he would never be, ever, never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. He's True. the only guy that I fear that can beat me. He had a quality that went beyond his skills. He was a winner. He was a champion. He was the best I'd ever, uh, he's the best I ever played with, against, or anything ever seen. <laughs> he, uh, people talk about Michael Jordan now and stuff. <laughs> Michael Jordan can do a ton of stuff, but I don't think anybody was as good in the last few seconds as Larry was. All right. You already know. Right there, let me know what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? Larry Bird or Michael Jordan, don't get me wrong. I mess with both of them, and they're both legends. You know what I'm saying? But in your personal opinion, who comes out on top for you? Let me know. Put it in the comments. Goes cross court to Bird. Bird throws it up. It's caught. A three-pointer. Larry Bird. And a three-pointer with four seconds to go. <laughs> they lead by one. I give up. I surrender. <laughs> Jordan was 0-6 against Bird in the playoffs. All right. That's all I, that's all so I know. So you're sticking to your guns? That's all I know. I think he was motivated by pride. He had the ability to lift his game to an even higher level just when his team needed it the most. And that's what defines greatness in any athlete. Not just the ability to pile True. up numbers, but the ability to come through in the clutch and under pressure. Bird up fake, Bird takes the shot, it's on! Bird's three points, man, you can't mess with it. I got that! I can't believe it! It is good! A lot of players in this league that can score uh, the first three quarters of the game, but you get down to the fourth quarter when you need a basket, you can separate the men from the boys. It's been like that, and it's always going to be like that. You're always going to have the guys that come up with the attitude that they can make the last shot or make the big play. I don't know what makes a, a player do that, just their competitive nature and, and their will to win. I mean, he seems like a very intelligent man, too. Like, on top, it's not just the fact that he's good. He's intelligent, he's good, and obviously feared by a lot of 
basketball players because they already know don't mess with Larry Bird. And um, if it comes down to one shot, I won't be the guy to take it. It's gonna go to Bird. He's got a shot. Get it. Oh, and it's got it's a three point fail goal. And that's that. It's all over. Yeah. You were the most feared player. I feared you more than anybody else because this man would find a way to win that damn game. <laughs> Gets it on the sideline, goes baseline, throws it up and in. Larry Bird couldn't jump this high. He couldn't run at his peak faster than I can walk today. But Larry Bird, he just outthought everybody. What a move by Larry. Remember when Bird stole the ball against the Pistons? And imagine for a young kid growing up in Detroit, grew up rooting against Larry Bird every <laughs> chance I could get. I remember the day. Bird steals the ball underneath the DJ. I shed a tear that day. Like the great John Havlicek before him, Bird, too, saved his most memorable clutch moment for defense. In Larry's case, it was the fifth game of the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons, when the Celtics found themselves in need of a miracle. Detroit's ball out of bounds with five seconds to go, and I tell you, Isaiah Thomas made a play. He'll, he'll remember the rest of his life. Got him. Got him. Let's go. Hey. Yes. Look at the energy he put into this crowd. gets the ball and I'm sort of sitting on the floor waiting for Detroit to call a timeout but uh, I got back up and I seen that there wasn't going to be no timeout and when Isaiah lopped the ball to Lambert I cut all, all the way over from Dumars in front of him and just barely got my fingertips on it and caught DJ cutting out of the corner of my eye yeah. and him. That Larry Bird was the truth ain't no question about that you know, that's true thinking, like, boy you know this white guy really can play can he <laughs> look at all Born and raised in the USA. No, no. There's <laughs> only you. one Larry Bird. You see that? He's like, nah, I'm not saying you're just saying in, in America. Period. Only one Larry Bird worldwide. <laughs> okay. He is a legend, that's for sure. Michael Jordan is as stylish as they come. Oh, okay. Kevin Johnson's style is sometimes pure magic. And Charles Barkley's is flash and brute force. They will write their styles into basketball history. If you were writing a book about basketball, the people you just saw would merit a chapter or two. But ask any basketball expert, and they'll tell you that if you're rewriting the story of basketball, the author, Larry Bird. To fully appreciate what Larry Bird accomplished in his career, you have to first fully understand what he overcame in his life. Yeah, okay, let's Frank see Frank Lick, Indiana. Population 2087 cannot oh. be touched by interstate. Only country back roads can bring you into the second poorest region in the state, an area where the average income is just over $9,000. One night we were sitting there and in LSU. Again, learn something new right there. Gotta love it. Every single time we do a little bit more of these Larry Bird's uh, videos, you learn just that much more about it. And again, we're only, what, less than 10 minutes in, and I've already learned more things than I uh, expected to learn, and we still got quite a bit to go, so let's keep it pushing. Came on, Pete Maravich was playing him. Also, let me know anything that you learned while watching this video. Put it in the comments. Let's have a discussion about it. I was just amazed at what he was doing with the basketball. And he ended up getting 44 that game. And, and 
and after the game, uh, my dad said, I tell you what, son, you keep practicing. He said, maybe one of these days I'll coach you and let you shoot it every time you touch it. <laughs> so I always got a big kick out of that. Larry credits his first coach, Jim Jones, with instilling in him the fundamentals and work ethic that would symbolize his great career. 1973-74, Larry Bird's senior year in high school, state's leading scorer, state's leading rebounder, leading his team to the championship game in the regional. Let's go. Now we come to the subject of, this is bird country. Oh, this is bird watching country, but this is a rare bird. There's a media called Haley's, media, Haley's Comet that appears once every 76 years. And that's what they call him down here, Haley's Comet. He has unbelievable ability and welcome to Larry's world. Hey. Larry's quest for basketball perfection was developed at an early age, almost out of necessity. During his long practice hours, he wondered, why go home when there's nothing to come home to? He grew from a scrawny 6'1 sophomore to a gangly 6'3 junior. <laughs> Why well, they gotta say it like that? A scrawny. <laughs> to a 6'7 star who would average 30 points and 17 rebounds his senior season. When Larry graduated from Spring Valley, he did what any good Hoosier basketball player wants to do. Play for Bob Knight at Indiana. But at age 17, Larry Bird had never been more than 50 miles away from home for longer than a weekend at a time. His stay in Bloomington lasted just 24 days. Saying he felt lost and out of place, the local hero was headed back home. I don't think that I was uh, uh, either quite, uh, quite smart enough or quite understanding enough of Bird's situation when he was here. He was uh, from a small town down in southern Indiana, French Lick, and and uh, had, had had some tough things in his life growing up uh, and uh, came here and I kind of approached it uh, when he left toward the end of September. Well, you know, I wouldn't have chased May or Buckner or, or Abernathy and, and I'm not going to chase Larry Bird. He Big mistake. Big mistake. Well, probably at that point in his life, uh, Larry needed somebody to chase him a little bit and, and to show a little bit more uh, compassion for his situation than I did at that time. I get back to campus and I see Scott May and my brother Lauren who happened to go to Indiana University and I asked my brother I said well where's this kid named Bird and my brother says uh, yesterday I saw him out on this road and it's called 37 I saw him on 37 with his luggage I think he went home. <laughs> Did you feel like a failure when you were hitchhiking home? No, I was glad to get out of there. The only thing I was worried about is when I got home how my family would react. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember my mom was mad at me for three or four months after that. Uh, the first month we didn't even speak. And I can understand that. But I made the decision to leave and I was going to stick by it. I had everybody talking to me, trying to get me to go back. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't. Larry Bird put Indiana State on the basketball map. I had some friends who I kept in contact with while it's still back here in Indiana. I do want to know, so where did he go? Uh, didn't he go back? I'm pretty sure he went back, right? Because when he was playing in college is when he started playing against um, Magic, right? So hopefully we find it out. Let's keep it pushing. And uh, they never saw Indiana State or Larry Bird on TV. So because of the numbers that he would produce, um, they they assumed that he Larry Bird was a black player. <laughs> wow! And I thought, you know, never thought of that. But uh, they just thought that, you know, a guy can do that kind of thing as far as score and rebound and dish out the assist. That, you know, must be a black athlete. Two years later, back so people are just being racist. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> being stereotypical. Basketball secret weapon was no longer a secret to the rest of America. The Sycamores, who were unranked in the preseason polls Larry's senior season, breezed through the regular season unblemished. ISU tacked on a couple of more wins during the NCAA tournament, including a two-point victory over DePaul in the semifinals. That was a dope pass. <laughs> I can't even. I was trying to let that go by, but that was on point even back then, too. Over Watkins. Here's what you're talking about, Allie. Pushes him back in with a good ball fake. 
solid fundamentally, holds the ball above his head, great release, excellent rotation on the ball, the guy's incredible. He gets super balanced on his jump shot. Though. This game, Larry Bird inside, and Bird controlling the game offensively. Daly this game, though. Play, set play coming off the low double post. Mike uh, Marcus Wyatt fell asleep on that. He should have picked up uh, Larry Bird. Bird. Oh, what a shot. Does he ever miss? Does he ever there miss? When you work as hard as Larry do, you don't miss much. Let's just say that. I said at 26. Oh! Hey. Hey. Great assist. You're right. Larry Bird. Bird! Kept it in. He's everywhere. Bird. Oh, what a touch. Oh, danced it on the rim and dropped it in. We're even at 38. Bird has 20 points. Nope. Back to Bird. Great pass. Oh! Unbelievable, 83%. Uh -huh. Watkins, too late getting there. There's a beautiful soft touch inside. That was a basket. That was a good one. Larry Bird hits him with a block, but Bird is there again. Larry Bird with 31. What a pass. What a pass. This ain't even fair. I feel like this ain't even fair for the other team. Hit those great. Oh, what a catch. Oh, what's happening? Okay. Larry Bird, man, you know, Larry Bird's another guy that I have a lot of respect and admiration for. Watched him develop as a collegiate player. I remember him, him as junior year at Indiana State. Had a great year. Kind of first burst on the basketball scene. Then it's so, again, I want to know what brought him back. They kind of skipped over that part. Senior year, they were at 33-0 at one point, winning every single game. He's a guy I'd watch play collegiately on TV and just knew that he was going to be a great NBA basketball player. A lot of people had some, some doubts about him, white guy, slow, whatever. But you watch his flair, how he passed the basketball, how he shot the basketball. He moved on the floor at 6'9", 225 pounds. The way he moved was, was just a thing of beauty. Even though I knew yeah. I was probably going to shoot it, and if I did, I was probably going to make it, it would draw the defense to me, and it would open the court wide open. Get up, Larry Bird, double. Indiana State won it. Larry Bird off the backboard. Bird from the corner. <laughs> okay, uh, there's just not stop, no stopping him. All right, we lost sound. Okay. Still, still getting it. That's Larry one Bird, in your face. The ball in the face there, fake it in the face. Then now watch him shoot it. Unbelievable. You know how far away that is? That's in left field. <laughs> oh, look at that pass into Bird. Three blocks is like two miles in New York. There's only 1,800 people there. They win their 26 in a row. Larry Bird from yeah. the Indiana State has scored in the first. Oh, here's a long one again. <laughs> Next driving forces the shot. You know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I don't see the three point line. That's kind of weird. Here he comes in isolation on Larry Bird. Here it is. Now watch this dying swan hook shot. Doesn't jump too high, four or five inches. Keeps his eye on the rim. Pass off. Staley from the side, no good. Guess who's there? Larry Bird. <laughs> I think UCLA and Notre Dame have raised the white flag. Let's go. Play coming up, 41 points. Well, he's got 41 points already. He's putting on quite a display. We ask him if it's fresh. Knicks shooting high. Bird is there. He's got the ball. Bird is just there. Bird is just there. It is what it is. Okay, see, still do, being a beast even in school. <laughs> I was a sophomore. The last, I don't know, 15 games, I averaged over 40. But I had to because if we was going to win, I was going to have to carry the scoring low. I remember my first game, we probably had five or 6,000 people. So, again, please let me know if you know what kind of happened. Because, again, I really want to know why he went back and they are really just skipped over that so please if you know put it in the comments teach me something well there then three games later you couldn't get a ticket if there's no larry bird they're mid-pack to lower in in the missouri valley conference and instead they're the first or second best team in, in college basketball it's as simple as that he meant everything to them. well again he's larry bird and for everyone that uh doubted them i want to know what they feel now
you know, because he's just turned out to be amazing. Deadliest shooter ever. I define a shooter as, as one that understands how to make shots and do that consistently. A shooter is range and accuracy. Okay? And he got it. Yeah, he got that. Being able to go out there and just get in the rhythm and, and shoot and from 15, 18 foot make 60, 70 in a row. To me, that's a shooter. Chapter one. I just shoot any type of shot. I'm not afraid to, to take an off-balance shot or, or a three-point shot. I just get in one of them grooves, and I don't know what makes it go in. Sometimes it releases out of my hand before I even think about it. I think it's just the fact that I've shot some of these shots a million times. He squares up. Uh, very seldom does he take a bad shot. I think his background in, in Indiana has just had been tremendous. Waterfalls. Who come from that part of the country, especially Indiana, get the great fundamentals. There's nothing like going out there and throwing up shots and know that they're probably going to go in. My yeah. favorite jump shot shooter was Larry Bird. He set the way for us, you know, shooters. And the shots he used to shot, I'm like, God, that is amazing. And off the bird, he's there, he got it. You hear guys say they get in the zone. It's not just the scoring part of it. It's that everything's geared to you and everything else is so easy to do. And you can just tear a team apart. <laughs> it was probably the single most dominant. You could just tear a team apart. Yeah. Player yeah, in college that's basketball true. in the last 35 years. Oh, God. He would come out and start right underneath the basket. Took the ball and bam, just every time until he made every single one. And then he would take a six inch step back until he made every one. And then another six inch. Larry never stopped backing up. That's the unlimited range that he had. He was the best deep shooter that I've ever seen. He can shoot from deep and had no conscience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that's what made him even better. He was the best Somebody man. Was the championship matchup would prove to be act one of a long running two man play uh -oh. that would eventually leave a lasting impression on the sport. Bird didn't know his team would make it to Salt Lake City that year, uh. but he had a premonition Magic's team would. Uh, I remember the first time I seen him play is my senior year, and they were playing against the Russians. And, um, you know, they were dunking and passing. He, you could tell he had control of the game from the beginning. And we played the Russians that year, too, and, and we had a close game. They beat them, I don't know, 15 points, 20 points. But you could just tell he was a great basketball player. Indiana State's one for all couldn't beat Michigan State's all for one. Bird and the Sycamores' magical season couldn't make their final opponent disappear. All American, we lose, we, we go to the finals. We lose to, we lose to Michigan State. After the game, he tells me, oh, I, I need to go to the boys' club. I need to work out and shoot. I need to work on my game. You know, I mean, hey, we had a great year, man. What are you talking about? I'm going home and I'm going to brag. <laughs> I'm not going to play any ball, you know, but that's just the difference. Mm-hmm. That is the difference right there between being good and great. Let's go. When Larry Bird left behind the towns of French Lick, West Baden, and Terre Haute, Indiana to come here to the city of Boston, the hopes and dreams of an entire franchise were pinned squarely on his shoulders. Bird was a and they made a right choice. Junior eligible when the Celtics selected him as the sixth pick in the 1978 draft. Bird joined the Celtics a year later, signing the largest rookie contract in sports history at the time. Bird was entering the NBA at a time when 80% of its starters were black. He was joining a last place team with a me first attitude. A team that had posted the most losses in franchise history the previous season. Oh, geez. He refused to be turned into a symbol, a symbol representing the great white hope. Larry Bird could Larry Bird could walk literally in his heyday. He could walk into any black neighborhood in America. Why, why couldn't you do that normally? Am I missing something? Because I'm kind of lost on that part. Like, you're just going to get instantly beat up 
if you're white and walk into a black neighborhood, a certain black neighborhood, like, I don't think that it's just that simple. Like, don't get me wrong. If you're doing certain things, I can see you getting that. But just because you're walking in, I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep it pushing. There's just too many highlights of Larry Bird, I swear. All right, we get it. A lot of these highlights of this game I've seen a bit of them not all of them there, I think there's two of them so far that they've shown in this part of it that I haven't seen but most of this game I actually have seen again if you haven't seen a lot of my Larry Bird reactions make sure you check out the uh the sports playlist check it out we have a ton of Larry Bird and um we have Magic Johnson we have Michael Jordan so check it out This bird, baby. Oh. That was a good hook. Some blacks were skeptical of the knight in shining armor. Well, you know, the league needs great white players. The league needs great black players, you know, because it's great for marketing, great for the league, you know, fans and everything. And so I thought they were really just pushing somebody to, to be a great white player. I didn't think he was as good as everybody saying he was. He is. But once I came and started playing with him, I, I, I realized then that everything they said about him was true. Yeah. Had nothing to do with race. He was just great. <laughs> you know, we we sit back out and have a beer out in the, in, the, in a locker room, and we was talk. You know, be maybe talking. It's like, you know, white boy just lit you up. And I used to always say that, you know, like to my friends, it's like, yo, is Ryan really that good? I used to say like, yeah, that's the baddest white boy I ever played against. <laughs> I really don't like that. I really don't like that. He's probably just the baddest player you played against, period. Of the saying, if you really think about it. Yeah, Gator. Flat. Got it. Ain't nobody ever gave me shit. I had to get my own chance to make it out the field. Slim as a chicken bone. These lanes don't want us to shine. I hear it in the tone. All I really want to do is rhyme. I'll be in my zone. Yeah. This new era, I do not feel it. I know you think my shit hot, but do not steal it. I be spitting out grease like a hot skillet. Anything you hear me on, you know that I'm a killer. These new niggas, it's so ass. Don't come around my way, you get no pass. I don't even know what's going on these days. You ain't understand? Well, let me rephrase. Ain't nobody gave me shit. Just mama, not Reagan, not Clinton, not the Bushes, Obama. A nigga hit the block early, pitching at Madonna. By the age of 12, I smoke a marijuana. Spitting 16, uh. battle rapping, trying to make money. I'm authentic, and y'all niggas is fake money. You see the flow with something that never take. Come on. He's just too smooth. There's too many good highlights of Larry Bird. From me, you only hating on the gators cause you cake funny. Broke niggas, they stay hating. Want a brother to farewell, keep waiting. I'm the truth, go ahead with the Got him. So you're seeing a guy like Bird coming in and dominate. He was ridiculous. He came out here. <laughs> I remember our, our sportscaster played the, the Superman theme when he was talking about him that night after the game. <laughs> 
because he did everything uh, right. points, rebounds, assists, uh, just steals, you name it. Uh, Larry has such a great mind for the game mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a, a, a great touch. I, I had a lot of respect for him uh, as, as a competitor. Carter, the owner of the Mavericks team, to get back here at 3 in the morning with Larry Bird. And again, he's short, and Larry Bird. Unenviable pass and right again, there. Larry Bird. And then Larry and Bird. pass to Malton to a cutting Larry Bird. Zeesting finally misses, but Bird does it. Bird gets a three-point three drop. Yeah, they finally miss, but Bird does it. <laughs> oh. Guys. And again, there are the Celtics, Larry Bird. Good Larry Bird. Of course, he's one of the leading three-point field goal shooters. Is Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. And Larry Bird has 32 just moments ago. Ellis goes for the steal. And Man, how many times they say Larry Bird in each game? Of course, everyone knows his name. Larry Bird with the left hand. Winningham can't get it to drop. Larry Bird, three-pointer. Count it. Two-man game for Boston. Larry Bird only needs Larry. one man. Very strong hand. A lead by four with 12 seconds. Bird, three-pointer. Count it. Larry Bird comes back with a clutch play. The legend of Larry Bird really took root almost from the first moment he stepped onto an NBA court. Boston wins became a familiar phrase around the NBA yeah. when Larry Bird joined the Boston Celtics in 1979. In his first season, Bird helped the resurgent Celtics improve their record by 32 wins. And a year later, against the Houston Rockets, he led Boston to the NBA championship. Let's go. Bird pops out, takes it through. One of the best decisions the Boston Celtics ever made. Period. Hands down. It should have, um, he should have been, uh, probably a, a first to second to, no, I think that he should have been no further than a third draft, you know, third uh, pick draft. So the fact that he was even, what, sixth, they said, crazy. Bird, just right around the play. Bird will try deep. He should be a lawyer. Bird's free. Will have to be the ball hand. Bird. Picks off the pass. Ninth turnover. Wedman. Let's go. Larry there for the follow. Got it. Bird, there's the back door play. And Peterson picks up the foul. All right, how many times have we seen that play, Mike? Uh, twice a game for the last yep. month, huh? Unbelievable. Finds Larry, Larry Bird. Top of the key. Bird's quick turnaround. Very good. Bird for three. Make it 31. Oh, Let's Larry. go. Spins through. I'm not sure what that was. A double team that didn't double. And he's trying to go one-on-one -on, -one on Reed, looking for the double. And uh, McDowell gets down there, but not quick enough. He was one of the first stretch fours. Right. Right. We sit there. I mean, we that, we, right. we talk we about go, what's going go on today. To you talk about a guy who was six. What, 9, 6, 10, mm -hmm. playing the four, shooting threes. That was unheard of back mm -hmm. then. Best passing forward that's ever played. Chapter 2 is passing. While all of Larry's passes may not be fundamental, in this chapter, he always seems to get the ball there. He does. I realize that you can move the ball off the court a lot quicker if you pass it, opposed to dribbling. And I, some of the passes I make, I try, that uh, really might have a very slim chance of making it. But um, they do. you, know, you got to try it. because if you That's true. And I will say his passing game is one of the one of the first things that got me stuck on Larry Bird because you don't see people actually having really a good passing game if that makes sense because not a lot of people are even trying to pass it which is annoying so yeah a lot of respect for Larry Bird double team there's there, there's an opportunity that somebody's going to be open somewhere. He has such supreme confidence in his passing ability. He knows if he draws two people, he's probably going to produce something better in, in the form of a layup. Bird does it instinctively. It doesn't take any effort. He doesn't have to turn his head. He looks at the entire floor and he sees movement and color. The Celts won 61 games in Bird's rookie season. A year later, he would guide Boston to the first of his three titles. 
three years later, he would earn the first of his three consecutive MVPs. Let's go. He was cocky, he was yeah. arrogant, and he was driven by being the best player on the best team. You want to have them days where everything goes right for you, either passing, shooting, or playing good defense. And once it does, you don't feel like you're back to the other stuff. Now in this chapter, the other team has the ball. But when Larry's on the court, not for long. <laughs> it's all anticipation. You watch the other team, you, you watch the plays that they call, you watch the plays that the coach calls from the bench, and you anticipate where the ball's going, yeah. and you anticipate what your man's supposed to do, and you just go from there. It's a lot of luck. Tony holds the ball. At first, the ball. Whoa. I, I think that is less luck than he thinks. There definitely is luck involved, but it's skill in being able to observe what's really going on, and he did it, uh, did it at a very high level. So... He isn't blessed with a great deal of jumping ability, but he's blessed with knowing where to put his body. He puts his body on the right part of the floor to defend. He's, he has great anticipation. Mm -hmm. And the final chapter in the clutch, we find out just why Larry Bird is rewriting the book of basketball. Oh, yeah. And soaring over all challengers. With a dedication unmatched in sports, we now know why they say, get the ball to Larry. Sometimes he gets in the fourth quarter the, and three or four minutes ago and everybody will come and say, okay, Larry, it's time to take over. You know, that's the greatest feeling in the world. Here you're playing with uh, some of the best players in the game and here they come to you and say, okay, it's time to take over. Take over the game. And uh, that's a heck of a feeling. Old lady like do so much sad. I'm so nice with this rap shit. I should teach you class. Lord, you lay something. Show you how it's done. And I ain't even go. You can't stop him. Went hard, I'm just having fun. Can't none of these lanes see me, not near one. Niggas try to take a shot at me, boy, I dare one. I'm on a level niggas ain't, and they won't be. Somebody better than Gator, that's something that I don't see. My whole team speaks. Let's go. Young to the oldest. My music be the hottest. Attitude be the coldest. Flow be the meanest. Clothes be the cleanest. That's the reason why you bitch all on my penis. Uh, when it comes to dope. We the streamers, uh -huh. Gator running through my veins, no intravenous. If I ever fall off, that's when the streets are sabotaged. You and Larry Bird, teammates for a long time. What's your best Larry Bird story? We were on the road, and Larry used to have, like to have a little bit of fun after, like we all did. We were all young. We'd go have a few beers after the game and stuff. And so Larry decided on this road trip that he wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna drink, wasn't gonna go out, wasn't gonna go to bed early, was gonna take care of himself, and have a great road trip. He was, uh, you know, about three or four days into this to play okay. our, our game. We play in Golden State. He goes 0 for 8. First time I ever saw him go 0 for 8. He walked in the locker room, and we're all just going like, you know, we've never seen Larry go 0 for 8 like that. And uh, and uh, Larry goes, that's it. He goes, this is ter I can't hang out with Chris Ford. Going to bed's not good for you. So we stayed yeah. up there late that night. And the next night he had about 38 in Portland. Birds pull up on top. That leaves Bird open. They go to Bird. Quick turn around. It's probably because he was just too relaxed, in my uh, personal opinion. You probably got enough sleep and your body was just relaxed instead of if you were more on edge, you kind of, you know what I'm saying, a little bit more on your toes. I think that's my personal opinion. Let me know what you think. Why that if he, when he goes to bed early, he has a worse game. Tell me why, why you think that's happening. Put it in the comments. Thompson doing a good job of staying with Dennis Johnson on the way up. Bird. Got it! Portland, a nice job of covering up. Bird, three-pointer. Bang! Bird just really wants the ball. He just kind of said to Danny, there, give it back to me. That's why, I guess. Well, when you feel it, you got to go with it. Bird's quick fall away for two. And get it up quickly. Just Bird dripping him in. Gives it up. McHale for two. People get the pass. Bird. Yes. Finds Bird. Wants it. 6-10 to play. Bird in the middle. Got it. Up top of the key, Larry. Spins. Drive. Got it! Well, he just spun away from Kersey, didn't he? Yeah. Well, right there is a little hand contact from yeah. Michael Thompson that could have been called. Double team in Bird. Larry, fake. Fall away. Hits it! Come on, go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Life was just working out for Larry Bird, which again, not just working out because he made it work for him. So, but I love to see it. Unbelievable. That is just unbelievable.
But the magic of Larry Bird it, uh, was not on the basketball court, was not in the locker room. It was in his ability to create an atmosphere. But I remember okay. the one time we played Indiana in the playoffs. This is the first time he's come back. Mm -hmm. So he walks through the tunnel. I'm in the layup line, and all I hear is a loud roar. I'm like, man, who? I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> Russell, Kuzi, somebody right. in the building. <laughs> and it's Larry Bird. They're, they're, they're chanting, Larry, and this is the playoff game. And it was like, whoa, they go, Larry, this is my first time seeing him this close. Right. You know, so, you know, just he's just left an aura. Bit of a break tonight with Ken Norman. I just got to be careful. Have you ever met anyone that kind of has that same thing? Um, there's a few people that I've met that I have that kind of feeling towards him. Um, E40, for me, he kind of leaves that aura as well. So um, when I met him, that's kind of how I felt. So let me know who you met that just seemed bigger than life itself when you met them. Put it in the comments and let's keep it pushing. It's his second shot. Bird the trailer. You can't leave him open like that. The bird who just came back in. Yeah, three on one. It gives the bird back to Gamble. They go to Charles Smith. Bird blocks. Self's trying to get hot. Bird shot is good over Smith. Reggie comes away with it. Bird in his range. Bird pops out off the pick. Come on. Bird leads to the three. Here's, uh, here's Bird's backbreaker. Fakes using the parish pick, and as the defense collapses... And it's not even like his shots aren't good. Like, they're so clean. His deep shots are so clean. It's insane. He steps back. Watch him now. Well, we didn't see it. Watch him give Bannister the sign for the high five, and Bannister gives it back to him. <laughs> no wonder they don't have leadership. You would have punched him in the mouth. Exactly. At least <laughs> kick him in the groin or something nasty, you know. God wow. bless it. Heard again, alley -oop. Oh, boy. Larry, oh boy. How well he does it. Larry was just an intense competitor. Not one word ever said on the court between us. You couldn't ask for some better talent than what you have here tonight. Bird and Marcus Johnson. I remember we were playing him one time, and Kersey, this redhead referee, was reffing. And, and uh, our game plan with me was always to try and play him physical, to kind of, you know, bump him off his game, try and deny him the basketball. And Larry told Jess Kersey, you're like, Red, Red, get him off me, get him off me. And Jess Kersey, like, hit me with two quick fouls. And I just looked at Jess like, Jess, come on, man. You know, what heck is this? But that's kind of the stature that Larry had uh, started to reach after about three or four years in the league. And, and I'm frustrated as I've ever been as a basketball player. <laughs> you know, you uh, I would be, too. You just can't miss. You know, the great players get it a lot more than the average players. I mean, I see it happen with Larry Bird more often than any other player in the league. And so I went back to my room, and I, and I wrote this poem. And the poem goes, it's out of my hands. No control, no say, acquiesce to someone's demands. It's out of my hands. Rule of thumb is to act real dumb and pretend that there's nothing wrong. But if your senses are real and your mind is intact, it's kind of hard to go along. It's out of my hands. You acquiesce to someone's demand. You play the game, you perform the role, but then you try real hard not to console yourself too long after you're through. Because it's not really a test of a man, but only when the scale is grand, you find who's really who. It's out of my hands. <laughs> it was a release of frustration and just trying to remember that, was actually pretty good that one. there are bigger things in basketball and not to get so wrapped up into what was going on on the basketball floor that it caused me to be bitter and to be angry and to be frustrated. Well, see, but at the same time, that bitterness and that anger and that frustration, instead of doing something else, if you would have put that into the game itself, like in your practice, you would probably be up there with him. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, again, makes a good player into a great player. Like, that's the difference between it, in my personal opinion. Again, some people are just a little bit more naturally talented, but hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. Also, um, I love that quote. <laughs> While his wars were with Magic, his battles were waged with the rest of the league. It was a tie game. They had the ball, and DJ was stalling the basketball. You know, Larry was kind of standing. I was probably behind him, like, denying him the ball. And uh, they called a timeout. And he turned around and looked at me and said, I'm going to score red right here on you. <laughs> and uh, I said, I know you will. I'll be ready. Ten seconds. And Bird has the basketball. Look out. 
two seconds on the clock. I've heard this story because now he's going to say, dang, Larry Bird is going to say, well, the dude's going to say Larry Bird said, dang, I didn't mean to leave anything on the clock. I remember this one. Uh, I hope, at least. And timeout used by the side. He shot a turnaround jump shot. Double teams, too. I just looked back and the ball just went in. Hit all net. And uh, he said, uh, I told you so. Another time it was when uh, we was playing him, he had like 42. Kemp was a freshman. He told Sean Kemp that I'm the best F player to ever come from uh, Indiana and shoot and shot a three pointer in his face all net. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> Larry uses pick probably. Okay, I guess I was wrong on, on what I thought, but <laughs> that was a good story too. Other than the players ever played the game, and uh, Larry was on the box, and Robert Perry was coming down. Instead of pick on me, the chief didn't didn't shoot, didn't throw a good pick. So while Larry's in the air, he's got the ball right here, and he's screaming at Chief for not setting the pick. And I'm like, you scream at a guy in the air for not setting the pick, and he all, and he makes the jumper. <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't believe that. And he was one of the best, biggest trash talkers that you'll ever see in your see, life. That's All right. Okay. That's Larry talked more about. trash on the court than anybody. He'd tell you where he's going. He'd tell you when he catches it. There's nothing you could do about it. <laughs> he, he, he was, and it was, it was, it was great trash talking because it wasn't vulgar. I mean, he right. wasn't, you know, pounding his chest. You can just be standing next to him. You know, I would jump out and try to block a shot on rotation, yeah, he and he'd say, Scott, Scott, you're not getting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> running out here. It, but it don't was all that. game. He'd say something like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, and he talked the whole game, and it was, you know, after the game and after years of thinking about it, you're like, right. man, that dude. But he was, like Cap said, he was ridiculous as far as the way he played the game, and that's why he's one of the greatest players ever. And he could back up his trash talk. Played it, played it here. Right. Yeah, which is where it starts, right, right. here. Right. Yeah, but tough also, too, right? Superior, I mean, even but just superior. Larry Joe Bird beat every single last real nigga in his era. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Nobody else can say it. Not Magic, not Kareem, not MJ. Nobody can say that they beat every single last real nigga in their era? <laughs> Bird did that. He beat everybody in the 80s, nigga. Can't nobody say that. He beat Dr. J. He beat Moses. He beat Magic, Kareem, Worthy. He beat Isaiah Thomas, Dumars, uh, Rodman. He beat Adrian Deadly. Larry Bird cooked this nigga Rodman so bad. He cooked the nigga so bad. The nigga Rodman said, only reason Bird get that much hype is because he white. You know what that sound like to me? That sound like hey, that nigga Rodman was so salty. He salty. got by Bird. Exactly. That he was like, hey, man, only reason y'all boosted him is because he white. He beat. How many, bro, you know how many niggas Bird beat, bro? Can't nobody say that MJ didn't beat um, Bird. MJ didn't even get a game. Not one, bro. Not one. Not one. God in tennis shoes. The GOAT. That's my man, but he swept him. Oh, and you know what sweet gosh. means? That means... I think he beat him in Boston, and then he went to Chicago. See, my thing with him beating Jordan is, damn, Jordan, you couldn't get one? You feel me? Jordan couldn't even get one. Magic never... That is that is kind of saying something. Again, think about it. He, uh, Jordan, <clears throat> you feel me? You, when you really, like, line it up, like, Kareem never beat Michael. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody can say that they beat everybody. And Bird is the nigga to actually walk in the room and say, say, bro, look out. <laughs> I beat you, 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 you. I swept you. You supposed to be the go, bro. I swept you twice. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He swept him again in 87. <laughs> 87. Young, hey, look out, young. In 87, he swept him. LeBron fans, y'all gonna hate me. I can remember the night he and I and uh, Doug, we went out to Rush Street. And as you said, we had a couple beers, maybe a few too many because the Chicago cheerleading uh, staff was in, happened to be in the bar that we were at, and they kept sending us a few beers, a few beers, and before we knew it, it was late at night, and we had a few too many. We got in a cab, and they got us back to the hotel, and about uh, six hours later, we had to be up because we are playing a 12 o'clock game that afternoon. Mm -hmm. We get to the arena, and, you know, we're still a little tired, and uh, happened 
matter of fact, Larry fell asleep on the taping table to get a little nap before the game. So we go out, and Larry takes his first shot. He misses everything. And I'm going, oh, Lordy, Bill Fitch is going to be all over me because he knew he was with me. And Robert Parrish picks up three quick fouls. So that means I got to go into the game and play a bunch of minutes that night. We ended up winning the game and winning the series against Chicago. Bird had, like you said, around 40 points. And as we're walking off the floor, I can remember this. Larry looked over at those cheerleaders and said, thanks a lot for those beers last night. <laughs> the doors had probably just opened to the arena. And uh, these two guys walked around the corner. Our locker room wasn't well marked, so they probably thought they were just going into a restroom or probably just walking around seeing what they could find. They happened to walk into our locker room, and I could tell when they first walked around the corner that they were just like shocked that they were in the Celtic locker room all of a sudden. And Larry, as soon as he sees them, and he knows they're not supposed to be there, he says, oh, hi, guys, come on in. And he invites them in the locker room, <laughs> invites them to have some popcorn. You know, the Bob boys had already got some popcorn in there, and, and these guys are just like shell-shocked, you know, that they walked into the place, and now Bird's making them stay in there, and they're like scared to death. And so he makes him sit down by his locker and he gets him some popcorn. He says, you guys need anything to drink? We got some beer back here for after the game or Coke or pop, whatever you need. And then after every player would come in, Larry would introduce these guys to the player. And these guys, after a while, you know, they just started eating this stuff up. Casey Jones walks in the locker room. Casey, come over and meet my friends, my long lost buddies. And it was, it was just hilarious. I just always wondered after that night. That's awesome. That's actually a really dope thing. I really like that. What happened to those guys, how many people they told that story to, and how many people believed it. We was in Philadelphia, and it was around Christmas time, and, you know, the people dressing up like Santa Claus, they had like four or five of them sitting in one row. Well, the game's going on, and they take me out of the game, we're sitting there, and I look over there, and <laughs> there's these four Santa Claus getting in a fight, and these guys are pounding these Santa Clauses, and I'm sitting there going, holy cow. I said, what's all these kids think about this? You know, sitting in the stands, they look down there, four-year-old kids, hey, mommy, there's Santa Claus, and all of a sudden you see him in a fist fight with some guy behind him. That was probably the most startling thing I've ever seen in, in my entire career. I think the story that sums up Larry the best was <clears throat> back then when we flew commercial, we didn't fly private. Oh, this might be the hot dog story. Um, we played in a Tuesday night game in Cleveland. And, of course, we got up for the first flight out. We had a game on Wednesday night in New Jersey. <clears throat> Snowstorm hits Cleveland. We're at the airport at 7 in the morning. Flight's canceled at 7. It's canceled at 8. It's canceled at 9. It's canceled at 10. Canceled at 11, 12. We finally leave about 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon. We fly up to New Jersey. Now the storm has kind of moved into Jersey. And the bus driver says, well, I can't get to the, air I can't get to the hotel into the arena. I can only go to one place. Well, <laughs> we had a game that night. We go to the arena. So we get to the arena, and I mean, we're dragging. And we're sitting around the locker room, and you know, and everybody's kind of, you know, we're tired. And, yeah. and, and all of a sudden, you know, the coach gives a little bit of a speech of, come on, man, guys, we're playing basketball. Let's get ready to go. And Larry stands up, and Larry says, a couple other few, few choice words, <laughs> and he says, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take it out on their rear ends. <laughs> so I was like, oh, all right, so let's go. So we go on the floor. <laughs> Elbert King's sitting there, and Larry walks up to Elbert King and goes, don't take this butt whooping personally. I've been eating hot dogs all day. And then <laughs> Albert King looks at him like, yep. you've been eating hot dogs all day. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> yep. And we went out and just hammered him. I mean, we we, we terrorized him. Bird, three, two, uh, Bird, right over to Puka. Larry gets to Puka in the air, gives to Paris for two. Bird popping out, wants it. Got it. Not even halfway through the first quarter. Bird. Just Peace buckets, just buckets Five after Bird. buckets. Let's go. Fires right away. Bird hits it in traffic. Bird is free. Got it. Larry, right, good up fake on Chapuka. Uh. And hits. Bird open. Knew as soon as he shot it, it wasn't going to go, so he went and got it again. Yeah. He's got John Long. Backs his way. What a shot. What a shot. Pistons by three, looking for five. Benson and Bird. Hey, girl, Mom, that was a great one. Uh. Three on one. McHale to Larry. They find him on the baseline. Yes. Okay. Bird outside. Larry's open. Well, he'll give it and he'll take it. Come on. Bird wants it. Got it. Just swishing it, dripping it. No. Loose ball. Bird's got it. Two. 
I'm telling you. What a ball game. Let's go. Beautiful rebound and then good up fake. Up and in. While Bird was still active, he never wanted to look back on the highlights of his career. He feared this was an admission that he was no longer still improving. The NBA will discover more stars. Boston will attach itself to another hero. But both will be a little emptier without, without Larry Bird. Bird. He put the fun into fundamentals. He wasn't into degree of difficulty. His career lasted 13 seasons. Dang! Those thir Hold on. Into degree of Y'all saw that? Oh, we got elbowed hard right to the face. Difficulty. His career lasted 13 seasons. The pain those 13 Jeez. seasons delivered will last a lifetime. His body started asking for timeouts in 1989. By 1992, his body would ask to quit. He loves to portray himself as the hick from French Lick. This guy is truly a genius. He did things that nobody else had done, did do, or will ever do again. Let's go. From high school all the way up till now, if you give it 100% every day, uh, good things are going to happen. Good things That's happen true. to great players, especially Larry Bird, one of the NBA's fresher performers. Never been comfortable uh, being in the spotlight because I know how many people's helped me along the way. But the national spotlight was on Larry Bird as Indiana State dedicated a statue of its most famous graduate. Oh, if what? You dedicate yourself to something that you really love, your dreams will come true. I know I'm living proof of that. Three, two, one. It was also about dedicating a statue first envisioned by Indiana State students to be taller than the one at bird rival Magic Johnson's alma mater. The statue from the top of the basketball to the sidewalk measures 17 feet, one and one eighth inches. That is enough to dwarf the 12 foot structure at Michigan State. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for this day. The statue means so much to me, but I hope the future generations of young kids drive by here, maybe they'll spire one or two of them. Um, hopefully they'll spire a lot more, but if we can just help one kid or two kids to reach their dreams, like I did, doing it right I'll be very happy. Yep, doing thank a good you. job. That's awesome, I'm messing with that. I respect you yeah. and I admire you. All right, that is the end of it. Um, first off, gotta say thank you to Travis. Um, I know that this was a little bit long, so if you made it this far, please put shine in the comments S H I N E. Um, let me know who's actually making it all the way through and. Yeah, I learned quite a bit. Uh, anything that you learned from Larry Bird or from this video about Larry Bird, please put it in the comments. Um, again, we've done quite a bit of Larry Bird reactions and still learning new things. So awesome. I didn't know he had a statue too in Indiana. That's really dope. I'm messing with it. So yeah, if you're making it this far, you might as well hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that comment button. Let me know your favorite Larry Bird um game and what else you want to see me react to if you're already doing that and making it this far then i gotta say thank you i truly appreciate every single one of y'all i also gotta say thank you to the people that went over to my music channel last year i make music and i ended up releasing 53 songs last year a song for every single friday of the year and uh so i gotta say thank you to everyone that went over there and showed love if you want to check out the music links right underneath the like button and with all that being said you know i'll be back at it with another reaction tomorrow.